Welcome to Born to Watch, where three old mates, an ex video shop owner, an industry insider, and a black belt in 80s kung fu movies, put their mastery to the test on movies that change the world. Hey there fellow watchers, I'm Whitey and welcome to another episode of Born to Watch. And we are sailing out of our comfort zone again and into the rom-com realm. When Harry Met Sally was released in 1989, it instantly took the world by storm and asked many questions of both the characters and the audience. The main one being, can men and women be friends? Tonight, through our Born to Watch journey and personal experiences, we'll answer some of the bigger questions posed by the movie. Or we will dodge a few and not answer the rest. Just wait and see. G-Man, welcome back. We missed you, mate. You good? Yeah, great. Feels like a while since I've been in here, but happy to be back. When Harry met Sally, huh? Yeah, see what happens when you go away? What happens when I go away here? Yeah, well, you know, it was a number generator. But that's what we're calling it. It's just called This Was Morgz's Pick. Fair enough. Yeah, okay. And up there on the land. Dan, how are you? He was, he was a funny little bloke, that uh, strawberry blonde man last week, wasn't he? <laughs> the ginger? <laughs> hey, hey. Yeah. I'm a fan of pants. I thought he was excellent. Yeah, he did a good job. He always, he, he loves, he was funny because he, he made it abundantly clear that he thinks he's only good every four to six weeks. Yeah. So he doesn't want to be a permanent member and he can never replace our gal. He brings the heat every four to six weeks. He does. He does. Like, like Brad Fittler back in the 90s. You know, every four to six games, slowing to go off his tits. Anyway, Dan, you good up there? Yes, most well. Looking forward to this one. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to say, I don't mind. I don't mind going down this road every now and again. I think it takes us out of our comfort zone. We get to explore our inner feelings i get to be thoroughly appalled at my own love life in the 90s and i can't wait to hear our thoughts on this one it should be quite interesting i know where gal stands firmly on a lot of the questions we will pose i know that morgs will dodge a la neo in the matrix a lot of the questions that we pose <laughs> uh but gents 1989 this was released when did we first see the movie and what are your memories on it and we're going to start up on the land dan oh God, no. I, I mean, I, there's no way I would have gone and seen this at the movies. Um, I'm presuming you did. Did you fork over your four bucks? Uh, no, them look, all from, no, no, I didn't. I, I was never a big rom-com guy in the, in the, when this came out. I, I, but I, I have seen it a lot. I must admit I have seen it a lot, but I didn't see it at the movies at all. I saw this was a VHS, 100% yeah, VHS I, rental. I think it would have been maybe a date night, I don't know, in 91. Oh. Yeah. 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 Definitely would have been. There would have been some Christmas presents maybe preceding or oh. or after it. Would so. have been before Christmas. Yeah. Had to be before Christmas. Oh, definitely. It was definitely yeah. before Christmas. Maybe in November. <laughs> maybe. Oh, in the good times in November. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. know. I, yeah. yeah. Can't can't recall when I would have seen it. But yeah, like you, I've definitely seen it many times. Not not for a long time, but many times. Yeah, definitely. What about you, G Man? Uh <laughs> I I don't know when I first saw it. I, I don't think I ever saw this movie the whole way through to begin with. I think I saw bits and pieces of it. I couldn't tell you when I first oh. watched it. It wasn't something we would have sat down and said, let's watch this. Not so, not not with the three of us anyway. No, so I don't really know where I saw it. But uh, yeah, I don't, I, I have a, I remember parts of the movie, not all of it together. I think the problem you would have had in the 90s, you had a finite time during the week that you could have watched a movie like this. A busy man. Right. And so Sunday afternoons between sort of one and six, was about your time and you're not going to waste two hours on this. You were like, you're giving the seven a workout. <laughs> I can, this was 89, I mean, was, mate, this movie, 89. <laughs> no, we wouldn't no, have seen it. Until, you wouldn't have seen it. You wouldn't have seen it. Until, would have seen it. No, yeah. I think we're, we're, we're probably seeing this 91, 92, I reckon. Yeah. I reckon Maybe. you're, you're I can, I'm picturing you, Gow, in your little lair down on Pittwater Road, living with Reese Sinnott, <laughs> a big fan of the, uh, the pod. Um, I, you know, it's Sunday afternoon. You've got a ten sitting there in the in the lair with you, and all you want to do is uh, is, is 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 get to get get your weekly in. But you realise that you have to you have to put in a bit of time before you can depants the ten. 
And so instead, you're thinking, what can, oh, what can I do? What, oh, what? I, know. I didn't, I didn't, I'll, live, I'll get a I movie. didn't live there. I didn't live there until the early 2000s. But what's he got that timelines out more? I think the bigger question uh. is, I, I think everything you've got is correct there, Daniel, except for where he's mm. living. The bigger right. question would be, what's how many pots has he got simmering on the on the uh, stove there at the same time? That'd be the question. What's he cooking? <laughs> what's he cooking on the stove? While he's entertaining. Oh. Oh, <laughs> okay, look, we didn't see this at the movies. This was a VHS date night, no doubt, and one of mine that failed. I ended up going home and getting introducing myself to Mr. and Mrs. Kleenex. Let's set the over and unders at 15 for this movie. We'll start with you, Gal. What do you think, Damo? Oh, we're well, <laughs> well under 15 on this one. Really? <laughs> two? Three? Yeah, we'll, we'll be two. Yeah, we'll be two <laughs> okay. for this. Right, that's a demo 12, and that's a gal 2. Oh, what about you, Dan? I haven't seen it for ages, so I'm going to say unders. Okay, I'm overs. I, I've watched this movie a lot, as one of our fine fans would say, a lot. And very much in the 90s, but I probably, like you guys, probably haven't seen this for, well, probably not as long as you guys, but maybe a couple of years. I, I do revisit this semi-regularly. Uh, but it's not high on the rotation, that's for you, sure. You'd been watching this and then straight into a bit of Cooley High Harmony. You know? Oh, mate, keep, look. Keep I, it going. I, a rom -com. It's, it's incredible. I, I think without prematurely adulating, this could be my favourite rom-com when Harry met Sally. What are, the, what are the contenders? Oh, there's not many, to be honest. Uh, I'm, ne I'm not a huge rom-com dude, but, but this could be the one that I – this is definitely the, the rom-com that I've watched the most. But more, more than long shot. Can't, more than more than can't buy me love. More than the one time that I've watched can't buy me love, and I shall never <laughs> watch it again. I'll watch when Harry met Sally again. I know I'm going early with that, but I'll watch it again. What other rom coms? I mean, there's <sighs> Sleepers in Seattle. You've got Mail. There's I, there's ones after that though. There's I, the early two thousands ones. For, this is I think this is the rom com that starts the rom com, yeah. right? So Nora Ephron, and we'll talk a bit about her a bit later. But but this is the one that sort of sets the standard and goes, well, come and find me. I don't, I didn't watch any. I, d I didn't watch You've Got Mail. I didn't watch Sleepers and Seattle. I haven't seen them. I I'm just not a rom-com guy. Like 10, thi like 10 Things I Had About You, no thanks. Failure to launch, all those Kate Hudson, Matthew McConaughey things in the late uh, 90s Ooh. and early noughties. No thanks. I don't want any of it. It, it. It's not my go. I think I've seen some of those once. But not, not all yeah. of them. I, haven't seen, I don't oh. think it's in You've Got Mail. I've seen yeah. Sleepers in Seattle. Yeah. I, I, I haven't. I haven't. So anyway, enough about that. I'm overs. The boys are unders. Let's listen to the trailer. Men and women can't be friends because no man can be friends with a woman that he finds attractive. He always wants to have sex with her. So you're saying that a man can be friends with a woman he finds unattractive? No, you pretty much want to nail him too. Greg? No, I don't like to eat between meals. I'll roll down the window. Faceless guy rips off your clothes, and that's the sex fantasy you've been having since you were 12. Exactly the same. Well, sometimes I varied it a little. Which part? What I'm wearing. You tell her about other women. Yeah. Like the other night. I made love to this woman, and it was so incredible. I took her to a place that wasn't human. She actually meowed. You made a woman meow? Sure. I need to talk. What happened? What's the matter? Harry came over last night. I went night over to Sally's last night. Because I was upset that Joe was getting married. And one thing led to another. And before I knew it, we were kissing. To make and a then long story short, we, we did, did it. it. They did it. The challenge. <laughs> I'm difficult. I'm too structured. I'm completely closed off. But in a good way. And I'm going to be 40. <laughs> when? <laughs> Someday. In eight years. For men. Charlie Chaplin had babies when he was 73. Yeah, but he was too old to pick them up. Uh, it's always good to head back to New York in autumn. Now, Gal, why don't you tell us about when Harry met Sally? All right. From acclaimed director Rob Reiner comes this explosively funny romantic comedy classic starring Billy Crystal and Meg Ryan. One of the most beloved romances of all time. 
when Harry Met Sally is shimmering with intelligence and humor, and it exposes the kind of truth about relationships that hasn't shown up in movies before. Sex always gets in the way of friendships between men and women. At least that's what Harry Burns believes. So when Harry meets Sally and a deep friendship blossoms between them, Harry's determined not to let his attraction to Sally destroy it. But when a night of weakness ends in a morning of panic, can the pair avoid succumbing to Harry's fears by remaining friends and admitting they just might be the perfect match for each other? Yeah, that sort of covers it. Covers the whole thing. It does. Well done. That's one of the better ones. Well picked, Gal. Yeah, I know it was a, you, you found that late. I did a bit, a bit of work on that one, yeah. You came to that one scrolled, late. Scrolled through a lot. A bit like Harry. I've got a couple things I want to pitch in here before we get to critical thinking. I, I tend to agree. I, th I think men and women can't be friends, but we'll get to that. The, I think this, and we'll get to it a little bit later as well, but I reckon this movie has given us a lot from a pop culture perspective. All right. Now, critical thinking. Now, we know we're out of our comfort zone here because we're going to talk about a... Uh, a review here from someone very special, but first and foremost, IMDb has this at 7.7 out of 10 and it's certified fresh on the tomato meter, 91% with an 89% audience score. This was a bona fide hit in 89. This is massive. This movie it's so beloved. Okay. So we've got a couple uh, reviews here. Now, you know, we're in a, we're in, you know, has the world gone topsy turvy here? So we're not, doing an action film or something that's very manly. We're doing a rom-com. Our good old mate, Dave Kerr, well, he's got a good review from the Chicago Tribune. Reiner wants to maintain the sitcom sense of comfort and familiarity. He creates types that we somehow already know, slightly out of focus images in which we can see ourselves and our friends. That's old Wayne. Good on you, Wayne. Yeah, he's, that's his first uh, positive review of any movie that we've done. So the bad review is from the Variety staff at Variety. So this is the whole staff, apparently. Rob Reiner directs with deftness and sincerity, making the material seem more engaging than it is, at least until the plot mechanics begin to unwind and the film starts to seem shapeless. It's a bit harsh. A little harsh, but it's a fairly well-trodden path, this, this plot, this movie. Uh, yeah. Maybe it wasn't for its time. Maybe this was the start of it, but... Uh... It's pretty. It's a pretty standard. It's rom -com. standard now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's pretty standard now. I think at the time it was, was sort of the first and foremost. Morgs, be involved here. What are your thoughts on this? Can, I'm going to propose something. Can I can I lead off with the Stan Bush Kickass credit song now? <laughs> no, you can't. I think I think no, it will really can't. set the scene. I think <laughs> if, but it, we can edit it out later if it doesn't work. But I just I need to get into this, and it's it, okay. it feels like kick oh, us, so. kick us, okay. kick I'll tell, us. I'll tell you what we'll do so that Morgs doesn't stand there like a shag on a rock, like That's I did. It. I feel like a stale bottle of piss, but I reckon if I do my kick ass okay. credit song, so now bef before we get to ordinary people with the G man. We're gonna we're gonna just change it up here. We're going crazy. The world has gone topsy turvy, and we're gonna move Stan Bush kick ass credit song to the forefront of this week's podcast. Now, what we might do is we might grab those dickheads that don't get all the way to the end and hear it. So they may they may ah. find something new here, right? So sucked in, guys. We've tricked you. Dan is gonna take it away. What's the name of your kick ass credit song, mate? Well, it's called it's 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 a little diatribe about this film how it's it's a bit different and really my major take out of it was that sex symbols used to be different so i look <laughs> at and we'll get we'll get into it in ordinary people when gal takes it on but f wits billy crystal as my leading man and his mate bruno kirby <laughs> two bits of bits of hot spunk right there to get the ladies into the cinema i don't know it feels mm. like that, that times have changed. So there, there's no real Brad Pitt moment. Whitey's favourite in this movie, and there's no Bradley Cooper. There's no th these guys are character guys, and uh, I just it just got me thinking. So my kick, Stanbridge Kickass credit song this week is called "Sex Symbols Used to Be Different," and here we go. A heartbreaker on the silver screen, like Emilio Estevez and Charlie Sheen, <laughs> Gary Cooper, <laughs> Cary Grant, and James Dean. Not Seth Rogen, Bill Murray, or Ed Sheeran. <laughs> the camera loves some, not all. The big screen won't say they're short or tall. Adam Driver has a head like a foot. <laughs> Jeff Goldblum's noggin is no good. Me and Whitey, you should probably give a miss. 90s gal was slaying the chicks. George Clooney, we just got to smear. Billy Crystal, now you're just taking the piss! 
sex symbols used to be different. <laughs> Short bald cats getting the viewers wet. Billy Crystal leading a rom com. He's a character guy. Belongs in a sitcom. Full house. <laughs> Uncle Joe Jesse's so rootable. What was the loudest mowers at thick end? Uncle Joey was not suitable. Sex symbols. <laughs> they used to be different, but I draw the line at Bruno Kirby. No. <laughs> No way he pulls Princess Leia, yeah. <laughs> Sex symbols used to be different. <laughs> oh, oh, dude, have you got a voice left after oh that? Oh, my God. <laughs> wow. I think the way I've written it, I've actually highlighted oh. where I had to accent too. So, yeah, that hurt. Well, you, um, you went over your two verses, one chorus no. rule. It's one verse, it, which ends in Billy Crystal. Now you're just taking the piss. And then that's the, the next thing is the chorus, which ends in sex symbols used to be different. Okay. Well, Dan, wow. I, well, well, you look like you're into it now. You've, you, your hair's a mess. I needed, uh, I needed that. I needed, I can no, see, my hair's always a mess, but yeah. I needed that. <laughs> I, can see, I can see a bit of a sheen of sweat on your, on your forehead. Uh, it looks like you're ready to go. Uh, well done. Another another quality. That's one of your better ones. Well done. Enjoyed that a lot. Um, I don't think that people were you, should... Were you, were you confused how Uncle Jesse and <laughs> Uncle Joey got into well, that one? Yeah, I well, wasn't quite sure how, yeah. uh, what, what, what related they had, other than Uncle Jesse was pretty hot. And we then cover, I got thinking I, about Alanis Morissette. <laughs> I'll tell you what, Adam Driver copped a drive-by. Yeah, he deserves <laughs> it. He just got. He just he deserves it. He deserves it. He deserves it. And I and, it's, and I, I I move through time periods and and crisscross around. Yeah, no, I mean that's f wits. If you don't make it to the end of the show, that's what we normally finish with. So yeah, you, you should you should uh, that these two are much better at it than I am. But I my effort is uh, is definitely uh, comparable. So yeah, no, we, enjoy, we, we enjoyed that one. Well that was done. A good well one. Played. Well so, done. So now we're going to move back to normal proceedings on the show. We're going to hit ordinary people with the G. How are you, mate? Go for it. All right, here we go. Billy Crystal started doing stand-up comedy at 16. Um, jumped into TV. He was on the TV show Soap as Jody Dallas in nine, early 80s. And then he was in This Is Spinal Tap, 84. Mm. Then became a Saturday Night Live regular, which really sort of got him going. Um, and then Princess Bride, Throw Mama From The Train. And then obviously when Harry Met Sally, as Morgs has alluded to, the top role, um, City Slickers 91, Golden Globe nominee for that, City Slickers, 90, uh, City Slickers 2 in 94, and analyzed this. Done a lot of voiceover work too since then. Yeah, Mike Wazowski in yeah. Monsters, Monsters, uh, Inc. Monsters Inc. Monsters Inc. Great movie, yeah, Monsters He's been Inc. in Cars. Obviously hosted the Primetime Emmys and the Oscars quite a few times. Yeah. So he, was, he was great at that. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, yeah, that's him. He used to be the opening act for Sammy Davis Jr. when he was young. Oh, there you yeah. go. Well done, G. Bring in the heat. And and it is funny though that he really goes on a tear after when Harry met Sally because he he does quite oh. a few of these rom coms as well. We'll get to one a bit later Did on. Let's in... get into Running Scared. I think we've we've talked about yeah. that yeah. quite a bit on the yeah we had yeah. he was in that yeah that Green was Hines, a favourite yeah. of mine. That was one of my mythical four tapes that I had at home in Woodwood Street in Cromer in the Badlands. Uh, that I yeah I'd watch it most weeks. So I I was a big fan of that film. You know it was it's a good movie Running Scared. Well worth a watch. Oh, just quickly, I've got one. On, I've got a little sliding door for you here on uh, on Billy Crystal. He was offered the role of Buzz Lightyear in Toy Story, turned wow. it, turned can, it down, and after he saw that, he was like, "Oh, that may be the biggest mistake of my career." <laughs> yeah, it definitely was. He went to the, he, he he went to the bag flicker himself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was. Uh, he was the bag flicker. Was the original? Yeah. He was. I can't see Buzz being anyone but Tim Allen, though. To be honest, no, it's it's hard. It's hard in retrospect. You're mocking me. Yeah, he's very good. But very Billy good. Billy Crystal's got one of those voices, though. He, he does. He can know, do it. He can do it. He could obviously be good at that role. Yeah. Your puppet gosh. <laughs> Big game pie. <laughs> uh, all right, Meg Ryan had her first role in the movie Rich and Famous in '81 as Candace Bergen's daughter. Um, bit of TV roles before she was in. Had that role in Top Gun. Yep. As uh, as the wife of as Goose's Goose wife. Yeah. Anyway, after that, that led her her being cast in Inner Space with Steven Spielberg in eighty seven, where she co-starred Martin with Dennis Short. Quaid. And yeah. Martin Short, I think, is it? Yeah. And then she was in the with Quaid in the remake of DOA in eighty eight, and they were married in ninety one. Yeah. yeah. But uh, other notable roles were the Presidio, obviously when Harry met Sally. That really shot her to stardom with the orgasm scene. Yep. Which really crossed her over. Sure, we'll talk a little um, bit about that tonight. Yeah, she was nominated for a Golden Globe and a BAFTA. She was in The Doors, 
Yeah, she plays Jim Morrison's girlfriend. Yep, Sleepless in Seattle, as we came up with. Courage Under Fire. Good movie. Yeah, it's a good movie. Really yeah. good movie. Uh, as we said, you've got Mail, Kate and Leopold. So what about In the Cut? After Proof of Life, where she has the affair with our Rusty, Rusty puts her away, and uh, and she breaks up with Dennis Quaid and shacks up with Rusty Crow for a little bit there. She sort of goes a bit off the rails, and she starts. And this is where she sort of transforms into this. Uh, she gets a lot of uh, like Botox and stuff done to her face, and she almost becomes a bit unrecognizable. Yeah, but she goes a bit down and dirty within the cut, which has got Mark Ruffalo in it, I think, as yeah. well. Okay, she's done for a very famous blowjob scene in that movie where she's sucking wang in the movie. So anyway, she went a bit, she went a bit off the rails, old yeah. Meg. Well, she so didn't Dennis, do a lot between. Dennis, I just want to say Dennis Quaid married a long time. Dennis Quaid has a rough scone and he only looks good in film makeup. Yeah. He's got a massive big red conker like someone else on this podcast. But Settle down, slap Quaid. A, slap, a bit of, slap a bit of Hollywood makeup on him and suddenly Wait. he's a leading man. So I always wondered if we could get the Star Trek. Like obviously 90s gal could have, could have been a matinee idol, but why do you know I'm not as blessed with the, uh, with, uh, the, with, look, the with the naturals? I, I think, think I, Dan, I reckon you could, you'd be a good F. Murray Abraham. Yeah. <laughs> you, always, you always looked all look right at, with a bit of makeup, at, Morgs. Look it up, F. Woods. <laughs> 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 uh, yes, yes, um, yeah. So I, I always wondered that because he, yeah, he's got he's got a particularly rough scone, but he but he mm. scrubs up all right after seven hours in the makeup chair. He was a bit of a uh, he was a bit of a go to in the eighties and nineties. I'll yeah. quote him. He was him and Jeff Bridges. Like yeah. Jeff Bridges was a good looking man. Like really was. Like if we if we ever do a movie with Jeff Bridges, was he's he, in my like quick fire. Was he Thunderbolt and Lightfoot? Yeah, that, yeah. He's he in, was uh, in that, you know, that against all young. odds with yeah. Rachel Ward, where he goes to South America. Man, yeah. he's. Hugely fuckable. So take a look at me now. Oh, Phil, Phil Collins just killing it. Yeah. But here we go. A couple of sliding doors for you. She turned down Nicole Kidman's role in To Die For in 95. Oh, oh that was a good flick. Is that that's a yeah. good Josh Hartnell? Hartnell? Uh, Joaquin Hartnett. Phoenix. Oh, Joaquin Phoenix. A big part. Yep. Joaquin mm. Phoenix. She, um, looks, yeah, she, was, she looks good in that. She was considered for the role of Molly in Ghost. Turned it down. Ooh. That's a big turn down. Yeah. That was dumb. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, also, Mia Wallace in Pulp Fiction. No. Yep. Yep. She was wow. looked out for that, but then Mia, Uma Thurman took that. And she also turned down the role of Vivian Ward in Pretty Woman. Oh, she's good. She's good at turning them down. Yeah, she's turned down a few. Have you got any Have you got any other actresses that might have been uh, in line for this role? I don't. No. I do. You do? Who? Molly Ringwald right. was oh, offered the really? role. She turned it down. It's a different movie with Molly Ringwald. It's it is. It is a different movie. movie. Are they similar age? I feel like they, Molly Ringwald's a bit younger. Uh, uh, she was okay. So she was twenty-eight when this movie was made. Meg Ryan, Billy Crystal yeah. was forty. Billy Crystal was forty. Yeah, right. Molly Ringwald must be a bit younger than her. She'd have to be yeah. five years younger. I think. I think I read a story where they both they were both try they were both trialed for those different movies. and They swapped. Yeah, they were both being considered for for the roles, and they they end up getting these roles. Yeah, I can't think of the one that Molly Ringwald was in. Maybe it was. Late noise. Yeah. I can't think of what oh, it was. The Stan miniseries. <laughs> <laughs> Who's next, um, G-Man? All right. Carrie Fisher. We'll go quickly. Now, Carrie Fisher, we all know, is mainly known for the Star Wars trilogies as Princess Leia. We don't need to, we don't need to tell anything else other than she's Princess Leia. No. She's she's in the Blues Brothers. She's the Blues, Drop Blues Dead Brothers. Fred. Yeah. Uh, done a lot, did a lot of voiceovers later in her career and obviously a lot of cameo roles. Not a lot of movies towards the end, but obviously came back with the Star Wars Movies The Force Awakens, The Last Jedi, before she passed away. Here's one for you. She turned down the role of Sarah Connor in The Terminator. No way. Yeah. Turned it down. So Linda Hamilton. I, I, you don't imagine anyone but Linda Hamilton in that, do you? In 84, that's been made. So that's right after Jedi. Yeah. So she's like peak powers, Carrie Fisher. Really, she yeah. had done whatever she wanted. She really didn't do anything after she that didn't. at all. Well, what I just, what she I was just on read the out main, to you. Her and Tim Allen were hanging out. That was it. The Burbs. Drop Dead Fred. Like the there bags. was, there wasn't a lot. Yeah. <laughs> the bags. It was 89. Yeah. But yeah, she also, um, she was considered for the Kelly McGillis's role in Top Gun as well. That was 86. So. Okay. Yeah. Well, that would have been a better sex scene than the one with Kelly McGillis. That's for sure. She also might've got a chance to star in Top Gun Maverick. <laughs> I don't, I don't know <laughs> that Kelly might've... McGillis is the problem in that sex scene. I think it might be our mate, Tom. Cruise. Oh, Tom! Tom is awkward in all he's sorts of things. Weird. In all sorts of things. Weird, weird. Do you think he's had sex before? 
I'm not I'm not convinced. Oh, I don't, doesn't don't him and Nicole Kidman have biological kids? No, no, they no. don't. It's, they're no, all they're uh, adopted. They're all so adopted. I'm gonna, no, I'm going to say no. Then he has not. So he's had not had sex. a beer. He's not yeah. had a beer, and he's not had sex. No. Yeah, and he's on the spaceship. He's the first man on the spaceship. Good what on the life. good on the couch jump. Really taking advantage of your fame, Tom. Yeah. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and as we hit on earlier, just quickly, Bruno Kirby was the other <laughs> other part in this movie. Early start in The Godfather Part 2, played the young Clemenza. Yeah, Clemenza, yeah. yeah. He's great. Yeah. He's so good. Um, movie. Again, this is Spinal Tap, another Rob Reiner movie. Good Morning Vietnam with Robin oh, Williams. Oh, he plays the dickhead, uh, the dickhead guy in the station. Yeah. He's like the captain or whatever. Yeah, and then who comes in to replace him? Lieutenant Stephen Hawke. His name is? He's the guy that comes in who, who, who yes. kicks Robin Williams yes, out and then he takes over the oh, show. He tries, that's right. And he tries to tell the jokes. He, and he's yeah, he, does the, he does the jazz music. He's t- yeah, it's is, horrible. Is it Lawrence Welk? He does all that sort of Oh, he's malarkey. so bad. He's so bad. But yeah, obviously when Harry met Sally, City Slickers as well. He's in the Basketball Diaries. He was in Sleepers. Yeah. Uh, as Shakes' his father in Sleepers. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, and Donnie Brasco was the other most notable one in 97. Uh, passed away in 2006. He's the go-to New Yorker. So whenever yeah. someone needs a needs a New Yorker, that Bruno Kirby was on the line. But yeah, very, sadly uh, passed. Yeah. Sadly passed yeah. at a young age. He was only sixty. I think. Yeah. Fifty something. Yeah, fifty-seven. Yeah. Maybe yeah. very young. He died. Few. I think he was fifty-seven. Carrie Fisher was sixty. Yeah, sixty or sixty-one. Yeah, wasn't she? Yeah, she, she was. She was only young. Yeah. So if, it's unfortunate. Very young. Anyone else? G? That's it. That's okay. the world. What There's about no Nora, one else? Really? What about Nora movie? Ephron? Got anything on Nora Ephron? I do. Well, Nora Ephron. As a writer, she wrote Silkwood in 83. She did. She wrote. That's, hey, well, there we go. One degree of Kurt Russell. <laughs> Nora Ephron. Done. There you go. Because cool. Kurt's in Silkwood with Sher. And who else is in Silkwood? Uh, with, um, Meryl Streep. Meryl Streep. That's right. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. But wrote When Harry Met Sally Sleepers in Seattle, you've got Mail Hanging Up and Bewitched. Yeah. So wrote a number of rom coms, really. She. Uh, She's the queen of the rom com. Yeah. Anyone else? Rob Reiner, quality director. Yeah, we we talked about Rob yeah, Reiner. We have before. Talked about Rob he's Reiner. been he's acted in a heap of good movies. Yeah. He also directed most of those movies as well. Yeah. No, he's a legend. We won't we won't go down no, that we track won't again. Go down that track. Yeah, box office. So this had a domestic had a really had ninety two point eight million domestic and international only hundred and seventy five thousand. So a total of ninety two point nine million on a budget of sixteen. So it was rated Number 17 that year. And I know you probably went through all of these last week. We've been through 89 before with yeah, Indiana Jones, 89. Batman, yeah. Back yeah. to the Future, Look Who's Talking. Yeah, no, it was a big year. It was a pretty big year. It's not a great year, but it was a pretty big year. Batman was obviously the yep. the juggernaut. and Driving Miss Daisy. Lethal Weapon 2. Lethal Weapon 2. The best lethal weapon. Last week, we tried something a little different where we, we did 1989. Oh, we did 2008. We did some sleepers. We did some hits and we did some duds. So this week, we're going to do something again. So I've picked, um, I'm going to start with 89. I've got, I'm, I've got one each because I think three was too many last year and last week. And maybe you guys can throw in if you've got something to add. So my hit for 1989, I've actually got two, but my one that I put first, because the second one was a bit easy. My hit for 89, Glory. Thoughts? Dan? Yeah, Ferris Bueller, great movie. Denzel Washington. Morgan Freeman. Yeah. Uh, about yeah. The, the first Black Battalion. Uh, it's a really good, good period point. piece, that Great movie. I, 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 don't, I haven't seen that in 25 years. But, Same. Uh, yeah, amazing. We, we, we used to watch that quite a lot yeah. Uh, yeah. back in the day. We watched that a lot, Glory. Yeah. 89. So we would have watched it early 90s. Yeah. yeah. I haven't watched it since then, but I yeah. remember it being a pretty powerful movie. Mate, yeah. Very, very violent. Yeah. Very powerful. Uh, Denzel Washington is incredible in that movie, uh, as to his Matthew Broderick, actually. Anyone else got anything as a hit? Gal, yeah, I know you might have something that was this will be good. Oh, no. I've got Field of Dreams, Major oh, League. Oh, yeah. Of good. course. Yeah. Mate, well, Two I, crackers. I, le- I left the ones we, that we've spoken about. We've spoken about Roadhouse and uh, Major yeah. League on, on the podcast here. But, uh, yeah, Field of Dreams, of course, without saying. Okay. I've got The Sleeper. So I've got two here, but I couldn't, I couldn't really split them. But going to go for one. It's Ridley Scott's Black Rain. Okay, Ooh, Michael, Michael Douglas, Douglas yeah. Andy yeah. Garcia, set in Tokyo yeah. against the Yakuza. Uh, guy murders, and uh, we've got to take him from the States to Tokyo. Uh, one of the Yakuza hitmen and chaos and shoes. Once it's a they pretty get dark to Tokyo. movie, isn't it? Mate, it's like, cr- it's yeah. so good. Yeah, it's yeah, so good. It is quintessential 80s Michael Douglas. He's got the, the long back, very reminiscent of a gal. 
very gal. It's got Kate Capshaw in it. Yeah. Uh, it's just a great sort of detective action movie. Really, really good. And I think with Samurai Swords is, is pretty damn good for me. The other one that I've got as a sleeper is The Abyss, which yeah. is James Cameron. James Cameron's The Abyss. I thought about that as well, yeah. The yeah. Abyss is a good movie. Underrated. Yeah. Very underrated. Very, very slow. And also, you need to see the extended edition. If you can see the extended edition of The Abyss, it explains a lot. It's great. Okay, duds. Now, I've got two here. My first one, The Burbs. Mm, Tom oh Hanks. Yeah. Terrible. They think yeah. there's like a murderer living next door. He's just moved in. It's supposed to be funny. It's tragic. It's a tragic, tragic movie. Gal, yeah, you're pulling a funny face. No. Don't agree? Do agree? No, no, no. Yeah. 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 The Burbs. Terrible. 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 Yeah. I've got another one. I can't go without saying this. Karate Kid 3. Ooh. Yeah, not good. Mate, I think I've seen it once. Yeah. American Ninja 3 came out that year too. And, <laughs> yeah. not, not good, Doodlecock. Yeah, we could say Ghostbusters 2 as well. Yeah, Ghostbusters 2 is another one. Certain. Uh, yeah, so look, anything to add there, Dan? What are your thoughts? Uh, sleepers 2, too, <laughs> I thought that I really liked from that time. Drugstore Cowboy with yep. Matt, Matt Dillon. Uh, Kelly and, Lynch. <clears throat> yeah, Kelly Lynch. So very Heather much. Heather Graham, a very young, a very, visit. Yes, a very young Heather, Heather Graham. Graham. Yeah. Excellent flick and, and, and worth revisiting. And then uh, one other one that I thought was uh, definitely worth a revisit, starring, starring our own Nicole Kidman, but Dead Calm. Yes. Also from 1999. thought about that. So, yeah. yeah. Billy Zane. Billy Zane. Sam Neill. Yeah. That was really? a good movie. Interesting, yeah, really, really um, well conceived and, and thriller, well yeah, film. So, yeah, yeah, I, I, in fact, I, I, I would like to watch that again. That's um, just twigged my memory, but yeah, a couple of couple of couple of good sleepers in there. I mean, we, we talked about it the other week, but 1989, what about the amount of movies that came yeah. out that year? Like, it's yeah. just crazy, so yeah, like there's some quality movies, like there's the Dream Team, there's a heap of little, like, just under oh, the radar troop, ones, Troop Beverly Hills, <laughs> okay, okay, Dan. <laughs> Shocker, shocker, great look, great <laughs> horror. Uh, Peter Berg and uh, buddy, the guy off uh, X Files, the bald guy. No, no, oh, no, no, the, no, uh, no. Uh, Skinner, Walter Skinner. Skinner. That's right. Uh, I forget what his name is. Yeah. So anyway, all right. Well, that's it for. Oh, I got. No, I got a couple. Oh, oh come on, Jimmy. Yeah, yeah. yeah come on. Sleepers. Tango and Cash, obviously. Of course. A bit of Fubar. Yeah. <laughs> who, who couldn't like Tango and Cash? Another sleeper that year. One, one of what is my favourites? No holes barred. Oh. A Hulk Hogan vehicle. Yes. It's terrible. <laughs> when it comes crashing down and it hurts <laughs> inside. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Oh. Um, an another sleeper, an Aussie movie, Young Einstein came out that yes. year, 89. Very. Yahoo very, Serious. Yeah, so Yahoo Serious used to come in the video shop. So oh, he lived he? at Avalon. He's coming yeah. to the video shop all the time. Uh, not a bad fella. Uh, Got to know him quite well. He'd come in every week, one or two times. He had a he ended up having a little baby daughter he called Blue. You're my boy, Blue. You're my boy. <laughs> but he would come in and I would say to him all the time, you couldn't buy his movies on DVD. You couldn't buy Young Answer. You can buy anything on DVD. I go, hey, and and his fucking real name is Yahoo. So you can't go, hey Bob. Like it's hey Yahoo. Where are your fucking movies, mate? He changed his name to Yahoo, didn't yeah, he? Like so he where are your movies? Like it. And he go, oh, you yeah, know, apparently when all the movies. Well, there's Young Einstein. And Young Einstein too. No, no, no. There was, what was the other one? Um, he did do one, didn't he? Yeah. Oh, Ned, Ned Kelly, Reckless oh, Kelly. That's Reckless, it, Reckless Kelly. Kelly. Yeah, where he has the garbage bin. <laughs> he was like Dark Helmet. Yep. That's right. <laughs> that's right. Uh, but I'd say, mate, where's your fucking movies? He goes, I'm in a rights dispute with the Japanese. That was all Japanese funded, those movies. Uh -huh. So you still to this day, you cannot buy. A, uh, a Yahoo Serious DVD. Was, just, they had just, well, as an as an Avalon local, was he featured in the Dick Book? No, nah, look, he didn't feature in the Dick Book. His uh, his pubic wig was far too elaborate. Um, <laughs> a Merkin, now, let's just let's just let's just say that the uh, the the curtains did match the drapes for old Yahoo. Uh, <laughs> all right, <laughs> yeah, done with that one. Anyway. <laughs> I've got a bad one for you, please. I did a bit of research. Oh, I like it. You always do. I found, I found a movie in 89. It's called Chopper Chicks in Zombie Town. Wow. Are you going to read us what it's about? I'm going to read you what it's about. 
Star Jade Rose from Falcon Crest. You might remember her from Falcon Crest. No, I don't. <laughs> and uh, Billy Bob Thornton also pops up in this movie. Really? No, um, one of the synopses, a gang of tough women bikers are the only thing that stands between a crowd of zombies, which have been accidentally let out of a secure cave and those still alive in the town. The other, the other synopsis, big bad rocks and her cycle sluts roar into town where a mad scientist makes the living dead. Right. So this got uh, 4.1 IMDb rating. I took, that's better than it deserves, I reckon. Well, it got it only got three reviews on Tomato Meter. There was no score. <laughs> there we go. There we know. We know where Rotten Tomato sits now. Okay. You done, Gow? Done. Well done. Cycle sluts from outer space or whatever it was. Let's move on. Okay. Question time. So you hop in the car. You Harry. You hop in the car. You grab the grapes and then you spit out the window. Are you fucking kidding? Is he kidding himself, Harry? Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's horrible. That was, that was pretty funny. It, I was, was like, pretty, is pretty he funny. fucking serious? It was just yeah. so wrong, wasn't it? And he spits the first one into the window. <laughs> yeah, and he goes, I'll just wind the I window down. Wind the window down. Like, I, I, it just blows me away. Just, and I've saved another question for later on because I don't want to give it away too much. But, okay, then the I'm next sorry, thing. I've, I just found it hard to take him as the bad guy in that like, because he's such a wholesome, you know, straight comedian. I don't yeah, know. It's it, hard to take him as the, as the bad guy yeah. like that. He thinks he's a bit cool, doesn't mm. he? He's four foot seven. He's got nothing to be cool about. That that girl, he's standing on a box when he's hissing that girl. There's no doubt he's standing on a box. Okay, so you don't know anyone in New York. Not a soul. You've spent 18 hours in a car. And then you say goodbye, you never see each other again. Don't you just like hang on for like two weeks until you make some friends? And you're like, oh, I'll just hang out with Sally. And then you just... Bob her off and, and when you found someone better. and But it, surely you just don't walk away. Yeah, but I assume that she was just giving him a lift. Like her friend said, oh, yeah, give, my, know, give I, my boyfriend a lift. I, right? d so. I don't disagree with that. But you don't know anyone in New York, right? Yeah. You don't know anyone in New York. And you, the one person you do know, you just brush them as soon as you get out of the car. Daniel, thoughts? I, I was, it made me think about Gao and I on our travels. Uh, where yeah, how did, I, how did you, I know you were going to say that? Oh, you would, it was quite common though. Like you would, you would, you would meet someone on your on your travels, and oh, I, they didn't live anywhere at the moment. They were frequenting a hostel or something around where you were, and you didn't live anywhere at the moment. So you didn't really have anything to give them. That this is pre email, pre mobile phones, obviously. So it was it was kind of difficult. What it, it wasn't expected that you would just keep in contact with people. I think at that time, so I, I wasn't as shocked by it as as you were and i know that gal and i had some some great travels all over the world fantastic times morgs fantastic times <laughs> it, you know, it was a good thing it was traveling with morgs because he's the king of making new friends so he made it so easy he does he's, <laughs> he's, the, he's, he's the king he's the great icebreaker yeah i mean yeah loved it yeah well, he's the great icebreaker okay last question can men and women be friends i'm going to start with you gal uh, is is Harry's does Harry's argument have any logic? Did for did for Harry, I guess. Like mm -hmm. he he reckoned he couldn't do it. Does he's it not asking Gow. Harry. He's not no. asking Harry. He's asking no, I don't, you. I don't know. He's yeah. asking Matt Gowan. How can you not be friends with chicks? Okay, so my number one advice to all girls that I've worked with or that have worked for me that are learning the ropes of dating, every bloke wants to bone them. <laughs> that's the, that's the advice you're handing. That's out. the advice. They're not mates. When they have best friends, boy best friends and girl best friends is the biggest cop out in the history of planet Earth. Daniel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I fuck. I mean, anything I say here is not going to be right, but I, I, I think that Gao actually knows the answer to this and he's being an absolute Yeah, he's being wuss. very coy. <laughs> <laughs> I think it is less was less common when we were growing up for males to have best friends that were females. It just wasn't a thing, but it seems to be more prevalent these days. I will, I will throw myself. Well, hang on, best friends or friends? Like, well, well, well so, friends? no, like not acquaintances, like that you know and you're friendly with when you see them, like as friendly I, at, with you as you are with a with a bloke, a comparable bloke. That that's how that's where I think. I, it breaks down. I, I find it I, difficult. I'm going to throw myself at the mercy of the court here, right? I will throw myself at the mercy of the court. My 
fucking MO was to be mates with a chick. I wanted them all. I wanted them all. Right? It was a pathetic plan that went nowhere and it just led to friends of friends of masturbating and misery. Right? Now, I don't prescribe completely to the true to mean keep them keen, but I do not prescribe to the theory of men and women can be friends because sex gets in the way. There we or go. Not. Or it doesn't get in the way. Or it doesn't. Or, <laughs> that's right. No, 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 no. Hang on, hang on, hang on. No, 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 no. Gets in the way for me. <laughs> from them. It's not in the way of them. It's not in the way of them. It's in the way of me. Right? So I learned the hard way. Right? You tried, though. Like you Literally. Were, yeah, you, you stuck to your guns for, for a did. long time. I did. I put a lot of wasted effort in. <laughs> and if I could go, if I could go back, if I could be... Vince Neil or Richie Sambora, whichever one it was, and go back in the time machine, I would give my 14-year-old self the biggest slap across the fucking head and go, stop this foolery. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Megan will enjoy hearing that. Uh, hey, you've said your piece. Yeah, I did. I did. <laughs> okay. So let's slide into well sat on the fence, girl. Well sat on the fence. Well played. Let's move into... <clears throat> The good, the bad, and the ugly. We'll start with you up on the land, Dan. What do you got for good? Uh, good, I think, is just the script in general. I think Nora Ephron is rightly revered for this uh, this triumvirate of films, beginning with this one and moving into You've Got Mail and Sleepless in Seattle, which, look, we haven't seen for a long time. I think Gail was saying he hasn't seen them at all. But they, they were all groundbreaking. They were all very, very well-written um, scripts and, and did break quite a few conventions of the rom-com genre. And I'll talk a bit more about that in film school for FWITS this week. But yeah, I think if one thing stands out, of it, it is the tautness of the script from Nora Ephron and the directing of Mr. Rob Reiner. So they're probably my two major goods from this. Excellent. What about you, G-Man? This, this is either good or bad, but Sally singing <laughs> in the, in the karaoke and the karaoke machine as well. well both of them, there. that old karaoke machine yeah. where they put the cassette in, it, you've got to read the words. It, it's it's great, but no one bats a fucking eyelid. Yeah, I know. They're singing in the middle of this shop and no yeah. one- No one behind them. No one behind them no turns around and goes, looks. what the fuck's going yeah. on here? But yeah, mate, she could get a start on our pod with her singing. <laughs> Easily. She's a way better singer than she's a crier. <laughs> oh, yeah, way Darryl better singer than cry. she's a crier. Oh, have you got a good? Because I've got a good for you. <laughs> I've got heaps of goods. Oh. Do you want me to go? Or you yeah, there you go. Okay. I'll see if you get your... Get okay, your... so I've got the wave chat at the NFL game. I think that is unreal how he's brokenhearted and he's still standing up and doing the wave. I think that's fucking <laughs> awesome. <laughs> I, thought that, I laughed out loud. I, 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 I'd forgotten about it. And as soon as the footy comes on, I go, oh, it's the wave. <laughs> I, thought, I thought that was unreal. That leads to one of the good quotes of the movie too. It does. Yeah. It does. And then uh, New York. Every time New York's in a movie, I get a rock for New York. I love it. Uh, the whole dinosaur scene. Is, is incredible. I, fe- I Again, it's one of those ones where you know what's coming, but what I found this time is more the the dialogue leading up to the uh, fake orgasm scene. And he's talking about how he essentially is a koala who eats roots and leaves. And <laughs> she's like, uh, and he goes, yeah, well, I just get up and I, I leave. And, and she goes, well, that's disgusting. He goes, yeah, I know. I feel terrible. <laughs> <laughs> I was crying and had to stop it. I listened. I watched that about four times. Him just, yeah, no, I feel terrible. Like, I just love that. Uh, and the, after they have sex, the phone call, I think that scene is amazing. That took over 60 takes. Yeah, and that, that's really incredible, that. I love but that. Who who has two landlines, different lines beside your bed? Yeah. yeah. Bruno Come Kirby on. does, mate. Who has He's that? a swordsman. A swordsman does. So, oh, he's got a separate line. He does right? a separate line because he's a swordsman. But then he has the whole conversation right next to his wife and they can't hear each other on the phone. No, they can't. What's in the background? Oh, no, it's this, it's that. Yeah, whatever. And my last one, the married couples. I love the inner cuts between the married couples. Now, they are they were real stories. Yeah. And then they got actors to play them. Now, there's one of them where they're talking, where they're intercutting and they're inter- cutting into each other's sentences. Uh, and Megan goes, are these real couples? And I go, it feels like they really are. Yeah. Like that, there was one especially who I was like, that is 
definitely they're a married couple, but they're all actors. Yeah, it's the old Italian couple. I think they yeah. kept they kept finishing each other's. Yeah, where they go. I, I lived in down on this street. Yeah, I yeah. lived in them. We never met. Yeah. Like I was like, fuck. That was really cool. Uh, that's my good. Now, Gal, what have you got? What have I missed? You're good. The good that I got for you my is good. that when that when that when he first goes to her apartment, or when I think it's when they the scene where they sleep together, and then he's lying in the oh, bed, and she comes over and he says, he says to her. She goes, here's your video tapes. She goes, you got all your video tapes alphabetized and on index cards? And she goes, yes, of course. I was like, that's you. Yeah. I had it. You had, had that. I had a massive database, yeah. yeah it was pathetic. And then you had, obviously, every video lined up with a red first oh, letter yeah. and the black Those following the letters. That was, that was when I was deep in the friend zone. <laughs> I had a deep, lot of time. Deep, deep, deep. I had deep. a lot of time to be cataloging shit when I was either alone, hanging out with you guys, wanking, or just re re tagging my VHS tapes on Tissue Patrol. Oh, mate, I'm telling you what. Proudly sponsored. And this podcast tonight is proudly sponsored by Kleenex. Uh, anyway, so the bad, and we'll start with you, G Man, <laughs> considering that uh, you're on a roll. What have you got for bad? Mate, I've got Jess's clothes when they're in the wag when they go to the wagon wheel scene. Oh my god, I've got it as well. And I looked, and I had to, I had to stop the movie and have a look at it and take a photo because <laughs> it is so bad. It's it's so, like a cut off sloppy joke. He actually wears that top when they're in the baseball scene too. Yes. He wears that when oh, we'll get to that. But uh, but yeah, it's a it's a it's a sweatshirt yes. that's oversized. That's he's cut the arms off, yeah. so it's short sleeve. That's tucked into his jorts. Yes. Which are cut off jeans. Yeah. They're not, they're not jorts, jorts, but they're cut off oh, they're cut actual off jeans. jeans. Yeah. So he's got them and they're tight. They're tight too. And then he's got the white tube socks that are up to the mid shin. Mate. Like almost up to the knee. They're nearly knees. Yeah. In his sneakers. I was like, that's, that's terrible. It's terrible. You know what? It's not the worst outfit of the movie. <laughs> it's no. not the worst outfit no. of the movie. I Okay. I take your jorts and I race you, uh, jogging attire. Yes, <laughs> yes actually, that's where it is. I, I actually yeah. took, I also took a photo and I've just been trying to find it. Here it is. So I've got it. You'll be honest. I'll put it on the camera, but yes. yeah, I took a photo yeah. when I was watching the movie. Yes. <laughs> and but these two numbskulls are running PE Nation yoga pants <laughs> with a big Nike and leg warmers and and uh, it looks like a a, um, uh, a Lowe's uh, pullover, a, a, a sweater. So I couldn't. Oh, I was just crying when I was watching that. Mate, yeah. I was. So, I, I, mate, and they weren't even jogging. It was Kel. It was Kel Knight. I was walking. digging his Kath and Kim. It was Kerry <laughs> Saxby. They were doing the. They, they were doing the full they were walk. power walking in tights. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Was, yeah. I've got that. That was but, special. That was my ugly. Yeah. That's that in my was, ugly. That was disturbing, but yeah, that was right. my bad. <laughs> Any other bad? I've I've got a bad. Um, double dates, horrific. <laughs> no, thank you. Uh, now my bad is: Are Harry and Sally dickheads? Yeah. Are they dickheads? Yeah. Have they found their soulmates because they're both as big a dickhead as each other? He's a dickhead. He's a dickhead. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like he he just carries on, and she's just a bit. I don't know. This was in my ugly, just the predictable storyline with these two actors having to carry the whole movie. Yeah. And you need two strong actors to do it. And I, I don't know. She was a bit cutesy. Like, she's a great actress. I thought she was way better in something like Top Gun than, yeah. than in this. Yeah. And he was just, I don't know. It was a very New York, I don't know how you describe it. Mm. I just think. Just the, the, the long dialogue. I don't know. They're sort of, they're sort of dickheads. All right. Uh, Dan, thoughts? Yeah, I, I talk. I don't want to. I don't want to blow my own load because I talk about this in film school for efforts a bit. But yeah, it's 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 worth unpacking a bit more. But I'll uh, I'll I'll hold my powder dry for a couple okay. of segments. All right. So that seems like it's it for the bad. Is anyone got anything for ugly? No, I think we covered it all there. I've got one thing for ugly. Ooh, okay. Meg, uh, Meg Ryan crying. Ooh, she is yeah. a bad crier. Yeah. She's a bad crier. It's an ugly cry, and and not only that, like. He, he, okay. She would have snot and tears and stuff all over her face. He's right in there. He's a horny bastard, that <laughs> Harry. He doesn't give a fuck. And he's all over New York, wasn't he? He didn't care. Yeah. He didn't care. He was in. What about when they wake up afterwards and he's just doing the stare at the scene? <laughs> Mate, I don't, I, I'll get to that. I don't, I don't get that bit. That yeah. bit sort of, I don't get that. Anyway. 
All right, well done. We've crushed it. Uh, we're going to move into Morgz's <laughs> quick fire. Take it away, Yes, man. F-Wits, uh, definitely one of the top 20 segments in this particular podcast, Quick Fire. <laughs> it's where we take a look at the movie in reference to some other movies that we enjoy a lot, one of which is Crocodile Dundee and the seminal scene, That's Not a Knife, which has crossed over into popular culture. This film, I believe, has a few moments that have also uh, managed to spring out of the confines of the, the movie itself and, and burst into popular culture. Boys, uh, I mean, there's one obvious one. Is there, the is there one. any others that really yeah. uh, that stick out to you? I've got, I've got, I've got, well, obviously I'll have what she's having is the one. We don't need to talk yep. about it. It's obvious. Yep. Uh, I think this is the first time on film that, that someone has talked about high and low maintenance women. Yeah. And okay. I think that that is, that is definitely transcended. We've all had our fill of either. Uh, I also think it's the first time that good personality, like good personality goes a long way. That's a woman charming motherfucking pig. Yeah. But <laughs> I think it's the, yeah. It's they do the, talk about the good person. Talk about he's yeah. gonna have a good person. He goes, no, no, no. If, if I say that she only has a good personality, then she's ugly, yeah. right? So I think there's that one, and then obviously the men and women can't be friends, which I can 100 percent agree with. And I, I think it's really good to go back and realize that this has all been written by a woman, Nora Ephron, as well. Which yes, is, makes absolutely. It, she obviously, writes much more in-depth female characters, but just rides male characters brilliantly as well. Yeah. And the shit that comes out of our slash their mouths, uh, yeah. absolutely perfect. And what was interesting about that, uh, the first one, the um, I'll Have What She's Having, that was actually concocted by uh, Rob Reiner and Meg Ryan and Billy Crystal. So Billy yeah. Crystal actually stood, put his hand up and said, look, I think it's a bit too centred on Harry at the moment. We need... We need uh, Sally to, to get involved. And then they all just brainstormed this and workshopped it. And Meg Ryan's the one that said it should be in a very high-profile location, which was a restaurant. So kudos yeah. to all of them for, uh, yeah, what is what has definitely crossed over. So well played. Yeah. That was actually – that's actually a, a, Metz, a restaurant. Metz Diner or whatever. I think it's yeah. called Metz And so Diner. it's still got, still got a plaque in there. Do you know what – yeah, on the table there. But you know what is funny is that while that's going on, he's eating a fucking corned beef sandwich, which is horrendous. Corned oh, corn beef. beef. Oh, corn beef shit over there. Worst. Love that shit over there. I corn beef argument. is ass, ass meat. It's yeah, I, I, I dislike it as well. Shit. 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 Anyone Nick, that likes Tor corned beef, stop following us. Give me a cold frankfurt any day. No, <laughs> Nick, 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 yeah. Nick Torpy, friend of the podcast, he, I've had this discussion with him and he's actually a lot more gourmet than the three of us. And he, he says, done well. It's yeah. very good. And then the counterpoint to that is that Craig Plimmer also likes it and he is a dickhead. So, yeah, <laughs> I think that. Okay. That's, Ag that's agree. It. Agree. Yeah. yeah. Um, next one. Sorry, moving right along. Philip Stuckey, Jason Alexander's despicable character in Pretty Woman for a comparable character in When Harry Met Sally. There's no villain in this movie. Did you notice? Yeah, there's no, no, there's no real villain. Ha Harry does his best. I think Harry's a dick. He he tries to be a dick, yeah. but he's not. He's, no. redeemed. he's deep he's down redeemed. not a dick. He's yeah. redeemed. There's no antagonist. So again, I'll, no, there's I'll talk, not. A bit, talk about there's a bit more in film school for f -weeds, but very strange. Now you look at any other rom com, and there's someone who's getting in between the two that are eventually going to end up together, but not in. Not in when Harry met Sally. So very no, interesting. So agreed. Yeah, a bit oh, apart from them all being a bit dickish. Uh, yeah, no, no real standout. I agree. So well played. Uh, next one is the cast of Caddyshack for our revered film, loved by Jeffrey J. Bumflyer himself. But it can be argued that none of the actors in that film actually know what movie they're in or think they're in the same movie as their other fellow actors. Is there anyone in when Harry met Sally that you feel doesn't really get the tone and what they're trying to achieve with the movie? No, I think everyone's on point. There's not really enough. There's not characters. enough cast. There's yeah, not enough cast. It's a very yeah, tight. It's a very tight both, character list, isn't it? Both good points. I totally agree. I think it's although. It's, although I've got to say, I've got to mm. say that Harry's wife is a fuckwit, and yeah. Ira, 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 her husband. Actually, Ira, they've got someone off the side of the street and said, "Hey, mate, can you just come and fill in for this thirty-second scene?" He's hopeless, truly yeah. hopeless in the movie. That would that that scene actually was probably the the least realistic. I think I I just didn't feel that you would go up to your ex partner who you've just divorced um, and and not not particularly uh, fondly 
and no. and have it out with them in the middle of that. I, it, it sets obviously for a nice bit of drama and, and comedy, but yeah, it was it definitely took me out of the scene a bit. So yeah, good call. I, I, it's, I it's really weird that they're singing and then he just stops and he goes, well, "Oh, a, there she is," and yeah. then he just stands there. But he's so like, like he, a stunned take, mullet. But he is, and that's not him. No, like he's so confident, and mm. I understand that. Well, it's the one thing that's going to break him. But uh, yeah, wouldn't he just put it on? Yeah, you know, and oh, I don't know, pathetic. It's the worst scene in the movie. Yep. Yep. Good call. Ripley running, Sigourney Weaver, all hail you. We love you in Aliens, but you cannot run for shit. What about in When Harry Met Sally? Anyone that showed a particularly poor uh, prowess for anything well, athletic? We've we've already, we've mentioned them both so far. So the batting cage. The, ba- the batting, batting cage. Actually, Billy Crystal. Bruno Kirby's. Uh, no, Bruno Kirby is pathetic. Yeah. Yeah, Billy, yeah, yeah, yeah. Billy Crystal actually got a scholarship to uni yeah. as a, as a baseball. He he harbored dreams of being a baseball player, but yeah, it never I, happened. I, but uh, he hit the ball, right? Yeah, yeah Bruno, Bruno Kirby's Kirby. bad. Yeah, and obviously Central Park in the oh, jeggings. Yeah. Oh yeah, I mean the jeggings. Kath and Kim walking. Just, it's just the worst. Yeah. Excellent. Agreed. Uh, next up is Robot Sentries, again from the movie Aliens, for an extra scene in a director's cut that you'd like to see that maybe explains a bit more about the predicament of our characters or uh, a little bit gives us a little bit more background that we need. I don't know. I, I think the way that this is set up to uh, transpire over several years probably gives us sufficient background for the protagonists. What, what do you guys think? Well, she they have the big fight after the wagon wheel scene. Yep. And she's going, you've slept with everyone in New York and that hasn't made yep. you any happy. And we've only seen him with one other woman. But they talked a lot about it. Like he kept telling her all those, all those stories. But do they though? Like yeah. uh, he, she's, he's with the, with Rob Reiner's daughter. It is in the, when they're playing the uh, baby talk oh. scene. Is that baby right? Fish mouth. Baby, baby fish, fish mouth. Wow. Baby fish baby mouth. Fish mouth. <laughs> um, I just you see him with one. Did girl, we, did like, we play Pictionary when we oh, were? Oh, big time Pictionary, yeah. Did we? Yeah, I can't, Massive I can't blow remember. Ups. Yeah, yeah, we I played could, Pictionary. I, I could just presume yeah. that there were a huge fights, but I, I'm I just fairly can't certain it. that we were not allowed to be with our own partner. Yeah, we, <laughs> we, we had to change that up. Yeah. It, it definitely but, uh, uh, it rings a bell somewhere in the fogginess of my brain that I left behind many years ago. And we obviously but, uh, weren't friends yeah. with our partner, the person we were with for Pictionary, because that was impossible. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, that's that's right. So just to clarify, of course we're friends with the partners, partners of for yeah, sure. But we're not we're not best friends. Go and hang out with them. Go to the movies. Go and no, do no. do weird shit in Thailand. Friends, like we're just no, friends. no, yeah. We just yeah. Hey, how you going? Grab us a chicken. <laughs> Here's a sandwich. <laughs> While you're in the kitchen, <laughs> grab us a sandwich. <laughs> So you, sorry, to take out of that, you wanted to see a bit more of Billy well, Crystal I just thought, rooting. Well, not necessarily rooting, but at least maybe like him on some dud dates. Even if it was a montage for 30 seconds with him like on different dates that never worked out so that you could see that he was like, you ultimately know that he loves Meg Ryan, right? You know they love, they're in love with each other, but maybe some context to say, well, he's he's rooting around a bit. But he's isn't there a scene where he goes on a date? No, 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 oh, no, no, they no, took no, their I, dates to the, they took their dates to the Pictionary game, didn't they? Yeah, that's the only time yeah. we've seen with a woman. Other than that, it's the girl he kisses at the start, and yeah. then but they, but they do talk about it a fair bit that he's going on dates because remember he says to to Bruno, he's like, oh, you know, I can tell her all this stuff about all my dates, and oh, well, he says to he says to um Sally, he goes, well, yeah, no, I still sleep with her. Yeah, yeah, but you know, yeah. yeah. Anyway, but um, that's look, it. but yeah. other than that, no, not really. Getting back to your original question, no, there is nothing more I needed to see in this movie. <laughs> oh, God, <laughs> yeah, I'm cutting to the quick. Agreed with you, Jim. And last one: Why is Brad Pitt for the actor or actors in the flick that you would most most like to have a special lie down with? Um, gents, I mean, uh, obviously Meg Ryan, very very attractive. Uh, Carrie Fisher, sneakily attractive and would be a bit dirty, yep. I think. Um, oh, I get her to put on the uh, slave girl outfit. Yep, yep, yep. Obviously, From Je- Return, Return of the Jedi, Return of the Jedi bikini. The oh, it's peak. It's list. peak. Uh, it's peak Meg Ryan, surely. Yeah. Well, of course, yeah, she's, 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 she's a standout, gorgeous. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And 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 as uh, mentioned earlier in the Kick-Ass credit song, probably the only one that was uh, selected with uh, some sort of sex appeal in this particular film. So, and she does have a penchant for the Aussies, so you never know. Like we've got half a chance. Thanks, Rusty, <laughs> laying the groundwork for us. Excellent. Well played, Rusty That's the it. Slayer. Rusty the Gladiator. Rusty the Gladiator did do some good work there back in the day. That's it. 
Let's well move done, on. Well done, Daniel. Um, Listen, to this is up now, and this is right in Gow's wheelhouse. What do you got, G-Man, for listening to this? Well, we've bounced through most of the ones, but uh, look, a quick one here. In the museum scene, when uh, Whitey hit up before, when we are prepared to partake of your pecan pie, uh, he actually, that was ad-libbed, that last part. And she, uh, and I looked at this, and you see it in the movie, she looks up to Rob Reiner. She looks off camera, and he just, he obviously goes roll with it. Yeah. She looks back and then keeps going with the scene. And she's so. like, what's this fuckwit doing? Yeah, she just laughed, then she looked away because she thought it, and he's just, Told her to keep going. Yeah. Um, the other one quickly is that the concept of Sally being a picky eater was based on Nora Ephron because she's notoriously known for that. But uh, years later, after the movie came out, she's on a plane and she ordered something and obviously changed up the menu a la Sally. And the stewardess looked at her and said, have you ever seen the movie When Harry Met Sally? Yeah. <laughs> How funny is that? How funny is that? Uh, did you notice that Harry loves to read, but Harry's reading Misery? Yes, in one yes. of these things, and that's actually the next movie that Rob Reiner directs. Yes, that's right. Yeah, yeah. They're pretty cool. So yeah, Dan, you got anything for this? You're right into this uh, usually. Yeah, just Nora Ephron. I'll talk a bit uh, again in in a second, but it took a, it actually took her five years to develop mm. the script, which is a incredible amount of time. So she she showed it to Rob Reiner, and he was like, "Yeah, this is sick. How about you finish it?" And she's like, "Ah, oh, yeah, I'll get to it." And in between <laughs> her finishing, he went off and did Stand by Me and The Princess Bride. So. Definitely had a bit of time to uh, sit and wait for it. But I guess it, it was certainly worth the wait. But it's uh, it, as far as development time goes, that, that's an extreme amount of time from go to woe to get this thing uh, up and running when it was so well received, I guess, by the director and financiers. Absolutely. i got one. You got any more? i got one no. last one. Okay, so at a test screening, Rob Reiner was at, he said in the orgasm scene that the whole theatre of ladies – just went mental with laughter and all the men just sat there silent. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the men's like, no one does that to me. <laughs> no one fakes. <laughs> Hell yeah. They'd have to with me. Terrible. <laughs> um, okay, we've done one degree of Kurt Russell. It's Nora Ephron. So well played there. Uh, quotables, G-Men? Well, covered a lot of them. I've only got the one that we alluded to before at the basketball game when Jess and Harry are talking and Jess says, marriages don't break up on account of infidelity. It's just a symptom that something else is wrong. And Harry goes, oh, really? Well, that symptom is fucking my wife. <laughs> that one's so good. Uh, you got any? Oh, hang on now, Dan. We're going to save yours for the end. Uh, I've got probably another one that is we probably didn't leave into pop, pop culture, but I came here tonight because when you realize you want to spend the rest of your life with somebody, you want the rest of your life to start as soon as possible. Oh, <laughs> Harry, what a sweetheart. Yeah. But then uh, this one I think is quite funny. When it's after they have sex in there at dinner, it's so nice when you can sit with someone and not have to talk. <laughs> <laughs> and they're just eating the salad. And she just looks, oh, at, she just him looks at him like, you fuckwit. <laughs> And then my last one, my last one, which I think is fucking hilarious. I had my dream again where I'm making love and the Olympic judges are watching. I'd nailed the compulsory. So this is it. The finals. I got a 9.8 from the Canadians, a perfect 10 from the Americans. And my mother disguised that an East German judge gave me a 5.6. Must have been the dismount. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, very good. Hell. All right, that's enough for the uh, – I oh, know it's not. How could we forget? Dan, what quotas have you got yeah, for us I, from I, Harry Mozzellis? I did. I, I really was looking into Nora Ephron because it obviously a huge part of this film and wrote all those brilliant quotes you've just said. But a, an interesting thing that she said, not, not necessarily about this movie, was, I don't care who you are, when you sit down to write the first page of your screenplay, in your head – you're also writing your Oscar acceptance speech. So I thought that's uh, very, very interesting because obviously she went on to be quite revered, but uh, to, to, to say that you basically have to go in with your chutzpah already and, uh, and, and think that you're going to hit it out of the park straight away is a, a very good tip for all you budding screenwriters out there like myself. Yeah. So there you go. So Dan, continuing on the thread of no quote from the movie, just a random quote. So well done. Uh, we're not stay tuned because now we're staying with Dan with film school for F wits. Take it away. Yes, F wits. I've teased it out a bit. It's a, look not a long one this this week, but I've really wanted to break down why is Harry what's so different about when Harry met Sally as far as uh, this to other rom coms. I think the two major differences are Nora Ephron and. Rob Reiner, the director. So I think 
when, when you think about Nora Ephron, I think that the whole setup of this, normally you think of rom-com, you think boy meets girl, boy and girl hate each other, um, boy boy and girl go through calamities, and finally boy and girl get together and, the, and that's your, the, there's your movie. So that, that's kind of the structure of every single rom-com that has ever happened, usually with a villainous protagonist in there that will split them up, but uh, in the end the, the, the male protagonist will defeat the villain and... and take the girl that they've and they realize they always love each other la 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 so we've all been subjected to sitting through that particular rom-com you know a hundred times but what i, what I guess the, the major difference was this one was first just how well it was written and and the the quotes that the boys have alluded to so i think nora efron really just elevated especially the female characters but just in general the dialogue and and the, the setups and the scenes which uh is a lot different the other one was just the how she really staggered out that and and I guess subverted this particular genre of rom-com. So where Harry and Sally meet, they hate each other. Okay, yep, that happens in a lot of rom-coms. But then, as Whitey said, they, they go off into the night expecting never to see each other again. They accidentally meet up five years later. They still hate each other. Harry's still a dick. She's still uh, quirky and neurotic. And um, a, another five years passed, they hate each other again. He's still being a dick. So a really interesting way and, and certainly one, I think, that hasn't been exploited too much with other rom-coms as such, which is probably what makes this really unique. And the, the other, I guess, major part of this is Rob Reiner. So we, we mentioned a couple of times the four-way phone call, which is a really pivotal scene in there after – Harry and Sally have rooted for the first time. So they, of course, ring their actual best mates who are females and want to talk about it straight off the way for, for, for Sally because she wants to process it and for Harry because it's not a root until you tell your mate. So they, they get on the phone. <laughs> and the, what was really interesting is the way that Rob Reiner shot this. So it's a, it's a fairly common device, uh, plot device in, in film to see people on a phone and, and, and multiple people on a phone. You, you sometimes see three or four people all joining a, a, a phone call. What's that style? But what, what was really different about this was the way they shot it. So they actually shot it in real time in a massive studio. So whilst you see the, uh, the, 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 the graphic line cut to suggest that they're all in multiple locations, they're actually all in the one location where it was shot. So the problem with this is it's a one take. It's essentially a one-up. And they can't fuck it up. And there's so much dialogue and so intense timing that they they practice this for a week to get it absolutely right. And then they got into it and they they got it, got it on like the fourth take. And the sound technician came up and he's like, I'm sorry, but there's some fucking birds in the roof yeah. that were tweeting away. Um the, the cut through and, and they're like, what the fuck? And so he's like, no, no, no. I mean, you, you just nailed it at the fourth take. So you, you'll be sweet. They're like, yeah, yeah, okay, we'll be sweet. So they jump on again. They can't get it. They get up to the 56th take and they still haven't got it. It ended up taking them 61 takes to be able to get it slick and to the final cut that you're seeing today. But an, another director would have just taken the easy route and shot all those scenes individually and then just spliced them in. But I think that... The, the way that they were able to trust those actors to give the performances that they did and I, I was, I, I think, just testament to how it was. It was just thought of a bit differently and a lot more effort went into some of the smaller things that you wouldn't see. So, yeah, they're, look, they're just two things that I guess, why are we doing When Harry Met Sally on this podcast uh, and compared to other rom-coms? I think it it is, it's, would be hard to argue that it isn't elevated above some other of the, uh, the, the more standard tripe you get in that particular genre. So... There you go, boys. A film school for ref wits. Well done. You mentioned there, I got a just a bit of a retort that you mentioned there about the after they sleep together for the first time and he's like a stunned mullet afterwards and he has to, you know, we have the phone call. But it's obvious that they're in love with each other, right? It's obvious all the way through. Even when they're playing baby talk and and she's look she he looks at her as she walks away with the yeah. boring boyfriend and she looks at him and da, 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 da. And then they bag the partners. Yeah. And then they, bag, and, and so it's obvious they're in love with each other. I, I don't get, I know it's, it has to happen this way, but surely like you've been hanging out for this forever and you finally get it and you do love the woman. Do you, do you act that way? I don't, I don't, I don't know. know. I, I don't know that Harry actually cottons onto, I think Harry's a bit thick. Yeah. I don't think he quite understands what he feels about her. As quickly as she does. I think there's a couple of cutaways that we see of her looking at him and her, one of his girlfriends and you get, okay, Sally loves Harry. I think that that is quite obvious to the audience um, throughout. But I, I, I disagree. I don't know that Harry cots onto it. I think he's a little bit more uh, 
prehistoric and doesn't quite master his feelings up until that point. So that, that would be my only thoughts there. Yeah, okay. I, I, right. I think, and again, I think that that elevates it in the screen, in the, in the, in the screenplay because it's, we're not beaten over the head from it. Like they give us the, uh, that the, they admit to the audience having a brain and being able to work these things out themselves. So, but we aren't given enough cues to, to think that they're ultimately going to go together, which are also in the original screenplay, they didn't get together. So it was only because of test audiences that they, they actually changed the end of the movie so that they did end up together. So I think that that probably is, there's still parts of that in the original screenplay that sees them not, are they, are they will they, won't they? But um, perhaps Harry wasn't quite as attuned to his feelings as, uh, as Sally. Yeah, I, I totally agree with you because I don't think it's to the point where he rings you and goes, let's go to the party, to the New Year's Eve party. She goes, no, I'm not going to be your backup anymore. And that's when he's yeah. like, oh. Yeah, and then he wanders the streets and yeah sits around and realizes, hang on a sec, what what am I doing here? Yeah, yeah. So uh, he, okay. he's a bit thick. Good arguments, good arguments. All right. Well, normally here we do Stan Bush kick ass credit song, but we did it earlier in the show to get. Don't do it again. And I'm telling you, I'm telling you, we it's helped. It really helped. It really injected some life into Dan, which is what we need every now and again. Uh, okay, so we're going to slide into star of the show. We're going to start with the G Man. Star of the show. Wow. Star of the show. I don't, I don't know that anybody really stands out here as, as out of the, out of the two main characters. And then you've only got the other two side characters. Oh, I'll go with Billy Crystal on this. I think he, as we said before, he's probably got the majority of lines. He's, he's quite funny. I, I remember at the time, like looking back on this, I didn't, I didn't find it as funny, but I do remember it being quite, him being quite good at the time. Yeah. Let's go with Billy Crystal. Yeah. Good choice. Dan. To me, it was less about the cast and more about the writing and the directing. And I think that Nora Ephron, for me, just pips Rob Reiner, uh, Nora, as the screenwriter, I think. It is, it's it's a, a fairly flawless take and, and, and certainly groundbreaking at the time. And I think that um, Miss Nora, ROP, unfortunately, was, uh, was my star of the show. Yeah, I'm going with you, Dan. I'm going with Nora Ephron. I think she, you, you see here, what's going to happen for the next 20 years, really. Uh, she sets the scene. Uh, it's a, it's a flawless, it is a flawless script. There's no doubt. And it's well acted. And, and I was, it would be Billy Crystal if I had to pick an actor. I think it's his movie. Uh, without him, it doesn't work. Uh, but it's definitely no reference for me. And now it's time for the rank bank. And we've got a few possibilities here. So in, in an ode to Daniel, we've got awkward 90 sex symbols. <laughs> We've got male leggings. We've got female best friends. We've got after sex freakouts. We've got ugly crying. We've got Sheldon the Wonder Schlongs. And we've got fake orgasmic salads. Thoughts? I like, I like, I like leggings. I like I the like, leggings. I like Sheldon the Wonder Schlongs and I like the, the, fir <laughs> the first one, awkward sex symbols. Uh, but I'm easy. <laughs> Uh, well played, Dave. Funny, Done well this funny. week. I could, I could uh, take, take them all. Uh, I think I, I think I like Sheldon the Wonderschlong. <laughs> there you go. Let's use that. I Let's did, use it's that. Another, it's one of the few lines where I laughed out loud. Old Sheldon yeah. the Wonderschlong. Uh, okay, so G Man, how many Sheldon the Wonderschlongs are you giving when Harry met Sally? This was a bit of a tough rewatch for me. It took me. Took me two goes to get through this whole movie. It's only a 96 minute movie. Really? Yeah, I just couldn't get into it. It's it's too one dimensional. There's a lot of just dialogue, a lot of Billy Crystal talking. I just, you know, I, I think he was the better part of it. But but I also think this movie, uh, to me, I don't know. I wouldn't watch it again. It's it's done for me. I'm two point five. Two point five. Two point five. Wow. G man, fuck. When you when you're harsh, you're harsh. Yeah. You're underrated with your harshness. What about you, Dan? How many Sheldon the Wonder Slongs are you giving when Harry met Sally? I, I'm with G. I'm going to Marie Kondo this. It's been really nice, but I don't see any reason to watch this again. I'm going to give it three and a half. I, I didn't mind it, but uh, I, it's, it's, it's just now a, a part of my past. So fuck off. Uh, three and a half it is <laughs> Sheldon the Wonder Slongs. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay. Well, I am giving... When Harry met Sally, I'm the same as Dan. 
I'm giving it 3.5. I think this is my favorite rom-com of all time. I've watched this more than any other romantic comedy ever. I watched a lot with Megan in the early days when I was, you know, trying to get away from my Kleenex uh, sponsorship. Didn't necessarily work all the time, but it was definitely worth worth the effort. I'll, I'll watch it again. I enjoyed it. I think the dynamic between the two leads is great. So now, Gao, where does that put when Harry met Sally okay, in the big that, scheme of things in the rank That bank? gives us 3.17 Sheldon the Wonder Schlongs. Uh, equal tied with Caddyshack on 3.17 Aqua Turds, right above Rock and Roller. 3.06 and below love actually at 3.19. So that puts us into equal 38th spot. Yeah, nice. Equal 36. Equal 36, sorry. Equal 36 spot. Okay. So we know that love actually is a go-to for Christmas. Is this a better movie than love actually? I don't think so. No. Oh, ben? yeah. Good question. I, I think it's just love actually. I just, uh, I, I, um, I, I always think of Christmas and, and definitely watch that movie yeah. around that time. I can't see when Harry Met Sally supplanting that film for that particular uh, reason to watch a film. But yeah, I, th I think it wouldn't be hard to argue that it's a better constructed film for sure. But uh, I don't think I'll be, I'll be trading places, unfortunately. No, I, I would watch Love Actually if it was on again. I, I wouldn't go out of my way to watch When Harry Met Sally. Yeah, fair enough. I feel you. I feel you. Uh, look, it's not fun. It's not, look, it's, it's pretty obvious out of the 45 or 46 movies that we have done now, our three out and out romantic comedies in love, actually when Harry met Sally are four pretty woman and can't buy me love are all in the bottom 10. So that's it's probably not, saying something. it's not a genre that we three <clears throat> gravitate towards for sure. That's not to for say sure. that they aren't, movies that uh, that people love and, and, and think fondly of. And there's definitely some heightened nostalgia that goes on when you think about this particular film. But, yeah, I don't even know what, where I was getting to. I mean, it's that most of that just suck balls. So. <laughs> I think Pretty Woman's not a bad movie. We were pretty harsh on that, I think. But that that is down low. Mate, it's got... Did you get some shit at home, G-Man or something? Did you? No. Are you a I'm comparing Pretty Woman no. apologist? <laughs> let me, let me, let me, let me take that back. Step that back. I mean, out of those movies, out of out of those rom coms, I don't mind that as as one of those rom coms. All right. So if you had to watch, but I one, think watch. you had to watch one of them tonight when we broke. Pretty Woman, Can't Buy Me Love, When Harry Met Sally, or Love Actually. Which one would you watch? It would either be Love Actually, probably that, or Pretty Woman. There you go. I'd watch this every night of the week. Out, out of those four, no yeah. one went for Can't Buy Me Love. You can't buy me love is a steaming pile of shit. <laughs> sorry, Damo. Damo is, sorry, Damo, president of the Can't Buy Me Love Club. Uh, okay, so okay. now it's time. It's time to pick a movie for next week, and oh. I'm gonna. Are oh, we gonna go the randomizer? Yeah. Well, we we got two options. I'm gonna throw something out to you. Okay, we can we can randomly generate, which we're gonna take whatever movie it is. We're not gonna. So talk me through how the randomizer. So works. we've got the number generator on the phone here. Yep. All right. And we've got movies numbered between 50 and 271. And you push the random generator and right. it will generate so, a number. So this is your list. So this is the list. With the movie 50 being, oh, I see, being Beverly Hills Cop 2. Yep. And then 271. All is down. Con Air. There we go. Oh, okay. Okay. So it could be, there's, there's 221 movies there. To choose from. Now I'm gonna throw one I'm gonna throw a curveball. Whether we do it this week or we don't. Oh we, can I ask can I, is there a special randomizer sound? Uh there can be. Is it like is it like the perfect match sound? Oh. Oh, I'm gonna get <laughs> Dexter on your Dexter. <laughs> okay, so here's the option. We're gonna do either we can do Creed three. We can do Creed three, new release. It's on Plex. It's there. Or we random it. What's it going to be? Let's random it. Okay. What do you reckon? What do you reckon, Morgs? Oh, we got, well, Dread came up last time, but I'm not fucking watching Dread, so it just needs to be better than that. <laughs> okay. Go, G. Hit it. <laughs> hit it. All right. We're going to we, 118. Oh, Morgs, you're going to love this one. Oh. Okay. 
With the random number generator, we have come up with Gal. Oh, Dexter over here has has pushed it, and we have come up with movie one one eight, and that movie is three billboards outside oh, of Ebbing, Missouri. Oh, now we're Good talking. movie, right, Mr. McDonough? So, oh wow, yeah, yeah, yeah. So so we and we're going to do that because that's a good movie and probably underrated. Oh, another yeah. quality Heavily from Mrs. McDormand. Yeah, yeah, great movie. Yeah. Uh, it's a great that's movie. A, that's Looking a forward yearly, to this. yearly watch for me, at least. So, uh, yeah, yeah well, wow. It's... If we, it's you're in for a treat. You need to watch this. Okay, we've, we're, we're at, because we're throwing things out of uh, shape here, and we're going to do If You Love This now. So, Gal, you got anything? Okay, Morgs, what do you got? If You Love This, what do you got? I uh, would like to suggest the 1986, uh, the uh, Christopher Lambert vehicle highlander uh with <laughs> sean connery clancy brown roxanne hart uh connor mcleod uh christopher lambert is born in the scottish highlands in the 16th century he gets killed in a battle but yet he comes back to life but he gets banished but it turns out that he's immortal and he has to battle all these other immortals from around the place it's fucking sick uh i, I remember it really fondly and uh, it didn't it didn't have a great amount of success on its theatrical release but i think in the uh cult and video world it just went on to huge things so yeah i reckon uh, i don't give a fuck if you like when harry met sally but you should watch highlander it's very good oh my god daniel okay well if you loved if you loved when harry met sally highlander is a definite uh, yeah. go-to <laughs> Just fucking incredible. Seriously incredible. Okay, well, I'm I'm going to go. If you loved When Harry Met Sally, you love New York. I'm going uh, David Fincher's The Game. Let's stay in New York as the as the leading as the leading actor. Great movie. Uh, well worth a watch. Finch is amazing. Michael Douglas, Sean Penn, quality quality cast. Uh, definitely watch The Game. Do you know, Gary, I'm going to yeah. confess that I don't think I've seen The Game. Or if I have, I've... I've forgotten it. So yeah, seven the game's point, seven point seven on IMDb. Yeah, it gets a big rap. Yeah, um, all of the Fincher files love it. So yeah, I, I will endeavour to watch that this week so I can report back. Yep. But yeah, good. Yeah, um, very early Fincher. Go. It's his third. Mm. It's his third movie. Um, yeah. So, okay. but, I thought but, you'd seen that, Morgan. I thought you always told me you loved the game. Anyway, <laughs> maybe I haven't seen it. <laughs> <laughs> and on that note, uh, another another quality episode of A Born to Watch. Gal, uh, are you sure you don't want to recommend Sixth Sense? I was going to say the Sixth Sense. Yeah. It's experience. No, <laughs> what a, another one here. It's an English one. Notting Hill. If oh, you like that, you're going to love Notting Hill. Yeah, absolutely. Good, forget good Paris. Flick. Yeah, forget Paris. Another Billy Crystal, Deborah Winger vehicle. That's pretty good, actually. It's very similar. Uh, very similar tropes yep. and beats to it. Yep. But it's been another quality episode of Born to Watch. Well, we think so anyway. We hope you do. Don't forget, we've still got the uh, competition going for the poster. Damo's brought in the Dark Knight poster, uh, signed by Damo. So <laughs> get yourself onto that. And if you are yet to have a look on our socials, check out uh, Instagram because I've just put up the latest uh, dance routine for the Barrack Dad's dance crew. And if you can pick which one's Damo, which isn't too difficult, it's the guy trying way too hard uh you'll have a lot of fun enjoying uh enjoying that it's michael jackson tribute uh billy jean and thriller love it yeah. gonna look that up straight away yeah, get, get into it, it demo uh, thank you guys uh dan thank you so much for your time thank you great movie let's uh see you next week uh, gal thank you so much see you everyone okay that's bye for now thank you for listening to this episode of born to watch to join us on our journey into some of our favourite movies of all time, you can find us on all good podcast networks like Spotify and Apple Podcasts. If you like what you hear, give us a five-star review and share with your friends.